Hi, it's me again, Miss Olivia, and welcome back. Before we get into our project, which is clouds, we're going to read a book called The Cloud Artist. And this is a Choctaw Tale by Sherry Merritt, illustrated by Marisha Zinquoa Clark. A long time ago, when the river still flowed free and the land knew no fences, Alice and William lived in a small house in Choctaw country. Alice was a basket weaver and William was a wood carver. Together they had all they needed to be happy, though they longed for one thing more. Alice and William wanted a child. The years came and went, and when a child did not come, Alice grew sad. One evening, unable to see sleep, Alice walked out into the moonlight and called to the night. Please send us a child so we can make our love bigger. You can see her praying to the moon. Many months later, a baby girl arrived. Alice and William named the child Leona. They, played, they placed their daughter under a crimson quilt sewn by her mother in a cradle covered by her father, carved by her father. Alice and William watched Leona grow with joy. They took her on long walks and introduced her to the plants and animals of their home. Once Leona could walk on her own, the little girl spent her days outside from dawn until dusk. Often she could be found nesting in the tall green grass, watching the clouds glide across the sky. Indeed, Leona might have happily spent her days like that forever, had not something quite unexpected happened on one particular day. You can see her laying in the grass, looking at the clouds. Playing in a meadow on top of one of her favorite hills, Leona watched a line of fluffy clouds walk across the blue sky. The clouds looked so very close, Leona raised her hands to touch one, and the cloud began to move. And from one tiny cloud, a tiny bunny appeared. Leona giggled and waved her hands again. Another cloud became a bunny and then another. Leona clapped her hands in delight and ran home to tell her parents. See, she's making bunnies with the clouds. See little sparks, little clouds coming from her hands. Mother, father, come with me, Leona said when she got home. I have something to show you. Her parents smiled and followed their daughter outside. They had not walked very far at all when Leona raised her hand toward a little cloud floating nearby. Leona began to wave her hand back and forth as if painting with a paintbrush. Her parents looked up into the sky and gasped in surprise. The little cloud was now a little turtle. Alice and William had heard the Choctaw elders talk of the days when their people once painted with the clouds, but it had been generations since anyone had been born with the gift. They watched proudly as Leona turned the skinny cloud into a hare to race the turtle across the sky. News of Leona's gift traveled like dandelion seeds on the wind. Her tribe welcomed her the return of a cloud painter, but it was the littlest Choctaws who happily sat for hours watching Leona paint the sky turning clouds into flowers and willow trees and animals, big and small. You can see her with the flowers and her friends watching her. Slowly but surely, Leona learned to tell stories in the sky. For the young, she painted ladybugs and stickball games. For the elders, she painted faces of loved ones who had walked on in days gone by. Leona learned how to make art that moved people to laughter and to tears. In doing so, Leona became a true sky artist. Then one day, a man from a traveling show came to town. He saw a cloud painting in the sky and followed it all the way to the little home of Alice and William. When the traveling man realized who had created the cloud art, he offered Leona a silver dollar if she would come and perform in his show for the week. Leona looked at her parents.
This must be your decision, Alice said. Her father nodded. Leon Leona thought for a while. Then with a big smile, she said, Thank you, sir. I will come and paint at your show. Be at the showgrounds at first light, the traveling man said. The weight of the silver dollar felt good in her pocket as Leona watched him walk away. You can see the man and there's Leona and him giving her the silver dollar. The next morning, Leona arrived at the carnival under a sky full of fluffy clouds. People oohed and awed as she painted bears and swans and a herd of mighty mustangs. Her heart swelled with happiness. So the people watching her make clouds with, make horse clouds in the sky. The second day, Leona rose early and hurried to the carnival. Eager to paint some more, she had more begun to do so than a mother with a bawling child hollered, My Jimmy wants to see a choo-choo train. A boy shouted, Paint a BB gun! Paint me a BB gun! Leona did not know what to do. She painted faster, but the request from the crowd only became more outlandish. Can you paint some standing on your head? A girl asked. Paint something with your eyes closed, another called out. When closing time came, Leona ran as fast as she could away from the maddening crowd. She was so very angry, but she waited until she was all alone to let her emotions run free. Oh, you can see man letting her emotions out with the clouds. You can see like there's like buffalo or bison. The walk back to the carnival was the longest of Leona's young life. She found the tall man with the top hat and told him she could no longer paint for him. Why not? the man exclaimed. Tickets have never sold faster. The lines have never been longer. Your paintings bring in people from far and wide. A newspaper reporter is coming tomorrow. Why soon you will be famous? His eyes narrowed. This is a ploy to get more money. Oh no, sir, Leona said. There is not enough money in all the world to make me return. Cloud art is meant to be shared, not sold. And with that, Leona returned the silver dollar to the man. In the years that followed, Leona never regretted the decision she made that day as a child at the carnival. She had found her place in the world and grown into a fine young woman. That summer, for the first time at the annual Choctaw Gathering, Leona found herself painting one of the old tribal dances as a handsome young soldier looked on. She left that evening on the arm of a young soldier named Alan. You see Alan walking toward, looking at her cloud paintings. Leona and Alan married and moved into a small house on their own in Choctaw country. They had a baby boy, which was all they needed. One child, a child to make their love bigger. What a happy surprise it was, though, when a few years later a baby girl followed. As all parents learned, the years flew by like clouds on a windy day. Leona soon had more years behind her than before her. Her little girl was not only a mother, but a grandmother now as well. A life well lived have given Leona many stories with which to fill the sky. She always made sure to paint the present, for it was history in the making. She always made sure to paint the past, for it was what made the future possible. She always painted the happy times, and she never failed to record the sad ones. Leona knew there were lessons to be learned from both. Then one day, her great-granddaughter, Charlotte, came and took her by the hand. Can you come with me? Charlotte asked. Leona slowly rose to follow the child. She reminds me of when I was young, Leona thought, smiling. The thought had no more than floated through Leona's mind like a cloud on the breeze Then the little girl raised her hand to the sky. Looks like she can do cloud art too. She made a butterfly. 
Okay, so that is the end of the Cloud Artist. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Now let's get into our project. Hi everyone, and we're back with another science project. I'm here with Lauren again from the Science Center, and the project today we're going to be doing is all about clouds. Hello, I'm Lauren again. I'm from the Arizona Science Center. So today I'm going to be walking you through a few activities that we can do with the kits that you got in the mail. So you should have these materials in front of you. You should have a bag of cotton balls, and you're going to need this bag, so don't throw away the bag. You should have a tub of glue. Don't eat the glue. And then you should have some shaving cream. It's a little traveling size shaving cream. You'll have a plastic cup, which you can fill this much with water. And then you will have some food dye, a little blue thing of food dye. A popsicle stick. This is gonna help you get the glue out of your glue tub. And then you should have two really fun googly eyes and a little package. So right now you can pause right here and you can go fill up your cup of water. All right, very good. You went and filled up your cup of water, so let's get started. The first thing I wanna do is tell you about clouds. I brought four very specific types of clouds that we often see in the skies. Do you have a favorite cloud? I love the cirrus cloud. The cirrus yes. clouds. Let's talk about the cirrus clouds. So. Where is a picture of the cirrus clouds? So cirrus clouds are made of ice crystals and they look like long, thin, wispy white streamers high in the sky. They are commonly known as mare's tails because they are shaped like the tail of a horse. Cirrus clouds are often seen during fair weather, but if they build up larger over time and are followed by cirrostratus clouds, there may be a warm front on the way. So this is a really cool cloud. I like this cloud too. Let's go on to our next cloud. So this cloud, this is my favorite cloud. This is the cumulonimbus cloud. Look at that, isn't that pretty? Clouds also have vertical growth and can grow up to 10 kilometers high. That's pretty tall. At this height, high winds will flatten the top of the cloud. They flatten it out into an, an anvil shape. So what you're seeing here is the shape of an anvil. Cumulonimbus clouds are thunderstorm clouds and are associated with heavy rain, snow, hail, lightning, and sometimes tornadoes. I know in Arizona, we don't see many tornadoes, but these are the clouds that we would see if we were to see a tornado. All right, ready for the next one? All right, our next cloud is a cumulus cloud. So these clouds have vertical growth. They are puffy, white, Sometimes they're even light and gray color, and they look like floating cotton balls. So cumulus clouds have sharp outlines and a flat base at a height of a hundred, or sorry, of a thousand meters. That's really, really tall. They are generally about one kilometer wide, which is about the size of your fist or larger when you hold up your hand at arm's length to look at the cloud. Cumulus clouds can be associated with fair or stormy weather. So watch for rain showers when these type of clouds, when you see them, and they often look like big cauliflower heads too. Very pretty clouds. All right, and our last cloud is the stratus cloud. So that doesn't really look like a cloud, does it? Does that look like a cloud? It doesn't. So clouds that are really low and have a uniform gray color they can cover most or all of the sky. So sometimes the stratus clouds, they can look like fog. That's, that's a cloud that has come down and is now on the ground. So light mist or drizzle is sometimes falling when stratus clouds are in the sky. That's pretty cool, huh? That is really cool. Yeah. So our first activity is you have another cloud sheet that says clouds. Draw the three main types of clouds and use these words to describe them. So right now we'll give you some time to draw the three main types of clouds. So let me tell you what the three main types of clouds are. They are this cirrus cloud, streamy like a horse's tail. The cumulonimbus cloud, a really, really big cloud that's shaped like an anvil. 
And then the cumulus cloud, the one that looks like a really, like really big pieces of cotton balls or cauliflowers. So these are the three main types of clouds. So right now you can pause, you can draw those three clouds, and then use the words at the top of this page to write next to the cloud that you draw what you, what you drew. Very good! You drew really cool clouds. Didn't they draw really cool clouds? They drew amazing that clouds. That was amazing. So for our next activity, let's try to make a cloud in a cup. Have you ever made a cloud in a cup? I have never made a cloud would in a Would you cup. like to try? I would love to. Okay, so let's start by taking that shaving cream. We're gonna open up our shaving cream. If you need an adult to help you open that, go ahead and get them to help you. Then you wanna fill this all the way up at the top. That's gonna be our cloud. So we're gonna make a really big cumulus cloud because we are making rain showers. So we want a nice, big, fluffy cloud. Oh, perfect, that's beautiful. So now we have, can we guess which of our materials is going to be rain? Those are some really good guesses. What do you think our rain material is going to be? I think it's going to be blue dye. Oh, you're right. It is the blue food dye. So go ahead and open the blue food dye. Again, if you need a grown-up to help you open this food dye, get your grown-up to help you. Now, I want you to count how many drops it takes before you start to see rain falling. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. That's a lot of rain. Thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, Twenty-two, twenty-three. Mm, maybe try on the side. Let's see. This might take a little 22. bit longer. It will fall Four. through. It just might take a little longer. Five. <laughs> Oops. Twenty-six. Twenty-seven. Oh, I think it's starting to fall. Twenty-eight. Twenty-nine. Thirty. Thirty-one. 32, 33, Miss Olivia can count really high. 35, do you see the rain falling? 36, Ooh. whoa! 37, so Miss Olivia got all the way up to 35 and then the rain started to fall. Just like in really big clouds, the rain, the clouds, they just get too full of water droplets and eventually, they have to start falling. So look at all that rain. Wow, Miss Olivia, that is a lot of rain. That's a thunderstorm. That kind is of rain. a thunderstorm. <laughs> Holy cow. Wow. That's so cool. What does your thunderstorm look like? Oh my goodness. What a great thunderstorm that you made. All right, so you can let that sit there in front of you and you can just watch your thunderstorm all day if you'd like. All right, so let's do our next activity. So with our next activity, we're gonna keep those three clouds in mind again. And you have a bag of cotton balls and your blue piece of paper. So now we want to make those three clouds out of cotton balls. So let's take about half the cotton balls out of this bag. We wanna leave some of the cotton balls in this bag because that's gonna be for the last project. Okay. All right, you can take a few more. Perfect. Okay, Miss Olivia. So let's start by making a cirrus cloud. How do you think you can use that cotton ball to make a cirrus cloud? Those are the clouds that look like the, what was the mare's, mare's tails? Yeah. Horses' tails. So you can probably take a little bit of our cotton balls and just stretch it out so it looks like some mare's. Very good, yeah, you wanna take your glue, 
with your glue stick and just put a little bit of glue on there. Perfect. Oh, that is beautiful. Should we hold it up and show this? <gasps> Her cirrus cloud. How good. What does your cirrus cloud look like? Oh, that is a beautiful cirrus cloud. You ready for the next one? All right, so let's make, sometimes I get the cumulonimbus cloud and the cumulus cloud a little confused. They look really similar, huh? What do you think is the main difference between the cumulus cloud and the cumulonimbus? What do you see? This one is way bigger and fuller yeah. than the cumulus cloud. Exactly, they're both really, really full and really fluffy because they're holding that rain. But see how the cumulonimbus cloud is just kind of one big solid fluffy cloud and the cumulus clouds are kind of little, little fluffy clouds, kind of separated. So let's start by making the cumulonimbus. Let's see, I think I'm gonna just take these bunch of pieces and kind of compact them together. That look like a cumulonimbus cloud to you? It does. All right, I'm gonna put a little bit of glue on my blue paper. Go. All right. There's my cumulonimbus cloud. What's your cumulonimbus cloud look like? Oh, what a beautiful cumulonimbus cloud. All right, now let's make our last cumulus cloud. How could we make these look like cumulus clouds? What do you think? I'm thinking of a cauliflower, yes. cauliflower head. Very good. So I would do that also. So we would take just a little bit, we'd make a bunch of little dots because cauliflowers, they kind of have big bumps on them, right? Yeah, so that's what we want to do. So we can take our little pieces and then we can just stick them to the dots. Perfect. Now we have a cumulus cloud. That looks like a cauliflower, I think. It does. What does your cumulus cloud look like? What a beautiful cumulus cloud. All right. All right, so now for our last project for All About Clouds, you have some little clouds left in your bag. So you just wanna leave those in your bag. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a cloud pet. How do we make a cloud pet? How do you think we make a cloud pet? Put some googly eyes on there. You put some googly eyes on there. So you have this little bag with these two little eyes in there. I'll give one to you and I'll take one. And this part might be a little tricky, so you might need an adult to help you. So these are actually stickers. So you can peel off the back. And if you can't get the back peeled off, you can use some of that excess glue. Perfect. So we're gonna take our googly eyes. We're just gonna open the bag. You just want to stick your googly eye on one of, kind of close to each other, put on the cotton balls. Perfect, and then you close your bag. And now you have a pet cloud in a bag. And you can name your pet cloud whatever you want. I think I'm gonna name our pet cloud Leota after the girl in the story. Nice. All right, everyone, well, I hope you enjoyed All About Clouds and had so much fun with me and Miss Olivia. I know I had a lot of fun. And until next time, bye.